Greetings, Hell Divers. Today, we're going to take an in depth look at some of the more underappreciated orbital support stratagems in the game. While the game does give you some basic information about how each of the stratagems work, there's still a lot of information hidden or unknown from just looking at the menu. So, to help you learn about your arsenal a little better, I've uncovered some of the mechanics, features, and characteristics that will hopefully at least allow you to make better decisions when it comes to using your orbital support stratagems. Let's start with one of my favourite stratagems, the Orbital EMS Strike. Unlock at level 5, the EMS Strike is going to be your most reliable crowd control stratagem. When deployed, your destroyer covers a small area in an electromagnetic static cloud. For the next 15 seconds, enemies that enter the area are slowed down to a stun, leaving them open to attack. It is capable of stunning everything but automaton tanks and bile titans, making it invaluable to relieving pressure when enemy density gets too thick. On the other hand, if you or a teammate happens to get caught in the EMS, you won't take any damage nor be stunned, but you will be slowed and have all your stamina drained and will need to dive out the area to escape. Deploying an EMS in a corridor or a valley or even just ahead of yourself creates an obstacle for enemies to push through. This buys you and your team time to rally, reload, or reposition. You can even deploy this on yourself while trying to complete an objective to protect yourself from melee terminates to an extent, as only your movement and not your actions are slowed down. This stratagem brings so much utility to the team that just having one person carrying it can make life a whole lot easier. Did I mention that it also has one of the lowest cooldowns in the game at 75 seconds? With the cooldown upgrade, you essentially have a deployable hard crowd control tool almost every minute. Personally, I find the EMS strike better than the EMS sentry most of the time, simply because you can decide where and when to deploy it. Nothing beats having a well-timed crowd control happen when you need it to. Next up, we have the orbital gas strike. Unlocked earlier at level 3, the gas strike is something you practically never see in your games, and usually for good reason. When deployed, your destroyer drops a gas bomb at the target location. The area becomes clouded in a corrosive gas for the next 20 seconds and deals heavy damage over time to players who enter it. Even after exiting the cloud, the damage over time persists for a short while, so best avoid getting hit altogether. When it comes to enemies, the gas strike really doesn't do that well against larger enemies like stalkers, chargers, and bigger automatons. They just have too much health to burn through for the gas to do anything meaningful to them. Where the gas cloud is really useful is purging all the smaller, arguably more annoying enemies, especially the scavenger and hunter bugs. Fortunately, they are squishy enough that the gas cloud can wipe them out easily. The main problem with the stratagem, however, is enemies need to stay inside the gas cloud to receive the full effects of its damage. With simply walking out of the cloud as an option, it's understandable why no one picks this stratagem. But you know what does a really good job at keeping enemies in place for a long time? The EMS strike. Not only does the EMS pair perfectly with the gas strike, both these stratagems share the same cooldown of 75 seconds and have nearly the same deployment commands as well. When used together, this combination creates what I call a corrosive EMS cloud that not only stuns most things that enter, but also erodes their health away for up to 15 seconds in total. Now I'm sure some of you are thinking that using two stratagem slots for this isn't going to be worth it, and in most cases it probably isn't going to be. But you know what this combination does extremely well against? Tunnel breaches. If you are too late to stop a tunnel breach from occurring, just toss an EMS and a gas strike care package right on top of it, and most of the endlessly small annoying bugs are going to die as soon as they pop out, leaving only the bigger, more dangerous bugs alive, which are going to be stunned as well. This makes them easy pickings for your armor breaking weapons or to call even more firepower down from the heavens. Not the most devastating pair of stratagems by any means, but it certainly is one of the most useful in creating space, buying time, and better enabling other stratagems to do good work. Lastly, we have the Orbital Smoke Strike. Just like the first two stratagems, the Orbital Smoke Excess at level 8 is also pretty underused. In fact, I don't think I've seen anyone else other than me run it. Part of the reason for this is because other than obviously blanketing an area in smoke, there isn't really any feedback to let you know if it's doing anything or if it's working properly. When deployed, your destroyer blankets an area in thick white smoke for 30 seconds. The smoke does not deal any damage nor causes any form of crowd control upon activating. What it does instead is obscure enemy vision, causing them to lose track of you. They'll only remember your last known location as you entered the smoke and as long as they don't see you again. This is why you'll want to deploy the smoke ahead of yourself, run through it, and get out of sight and reposition as quickly as you can. 
Doing so will cause the enemies to bunch around and search the smoke, wondering where you disappeared off to. Automatons will sometimes continue to fire into the smoke at roughly your last known location, allowing you to disengage from combat while still keeping them occupied. Knowing how enemies will behave, you can use your smoke as a trap, drawing enemies towards your last known location in the smoke, and then deploying other orbital armaments such as an orbital gas strike or even a minefield as a surprise gift. Before I end the video, I want to offer a small tip since we're on the topic of orbital stratagems. Pay attention to where you are on the map relative to the center. Your orbital stratagems are deployed from your destroyer, so depending on where on the map you are, your position will influence the angle in which your stratagems are deployed. The last thing you want to do is deploy your stratagems in a way that the terrain obstructs their arrival, thus wasting the deployment. Alright, to sum up the video, no doubt there are many, many more combinations you can deploy using these three support stratagems. In good hands, these stratagem combos can enable a team to do more by opening up opportunities for more offensive and damage-heavy stratagems to shine brighter, like the Orbital Gatling Strike or the Precision Strike among others. The high uptime on these stratagems also provides you and your team with ample chances for playmaking and recovery, and so reducing the pressure and need to brute force your way through every engagement enjoyable as that might be. If you've enjoyed this video and found that you've learned something from it, consider dropping a like and subscribing to the channel. I'm all about unearthing the hidden mechanics, interactions and combos in the games I play, like Dark Tide. And boy do I have a lot lined up for this one. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Over and out, Helldivers.